Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is so good. King David said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to God's house. I tell you what, it can be hard getting to the house of God. You might have to go up some mountains and down into some valleys. But thank God this morning, we are together in his house. Because I tell you, things happen when the church of God come together the presence of the Lord is in our midst. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And he's here this morning to feed us, to strengthen us, to encourage our hearts, to lift our spirit, and to seed his word right into the very center of our lives to do something new, to do something great, to do something wonderful. The Lord is here in this place. Oh, what a wonderful place it is to be together in God's house. Look around a moment. We might not be able to speak to one another. We might be a little distanced, but look around. Let's give thanks to God. Each of us are blood-bought. Each of us are his children. What a wonderful place to be together in his presence. Amen. Why don't we thank our musicians this morning? And you may be seated. Wonderful. Trust you have in a good week, and I hope you're ready to receive God's Word to you this morning. I'm sure it's going to bless you and encourage you in your heart. Last week, we started a series of messages, a new series of messages that we're calling Rethinking Your Life. And rethinking our lives is always important at times because we have to look at where we are and where we have come to in our lives. It's important to think about what we think about because the direction of our lives goes in the direction of our strongest thought. The direction of our life is often determined by the strongest thoughts that we allow into our minds. Sometimes it's easy for us to get stuck in life. Sometimes it's easy to go through the monotony and the routine of everyday living where we're just drifting from one life and one, one day to the next, holding on to things that we should be letting go of, holding on to things and carrying things that we should be shedding. And sometimes we get ground down by the routine of life. We get tired. We get worn out in our emotions. We get heavy hearted. And very often we can get left wondering why we feel the way that we do. When we're at moments like that in our lives... I found anyway that it's important to stop and think, to take stock of our lives where we are, to slow things down, to think about what we are thinking about, to maybe rethink and realign our thoughts to God's word, to God's promises, and to correct them if necessary. Any thought that might be hindering us, any thought that might be holding us back or pressing us down, we have to assess, we have to address, and we have to realign our thinking in relation to what God has said and what God has proclaimed in His Word. The immaterial thoughts that we hold in our minds, the immaterial thoughts that we embrace very often become the material experiences that we encounter in our lives. That's why it's so important 
That's why it's so necessary to think about what we think about. Thoughts are powerful. They direct our lives. They bless our lives or they hinder our lives accordingly. It's our thoughts that are behind our feelings. It's our thoughts that's behind all of our attitudes that we hold and the actions that are outworked through our lives. Our thoughts are at the root of it all. When we're feeling emotionally low, for instance, there will always be a series of thoughts that are fueling and empowering those feelings. The way that you feel is not just a matter of chance. It's a direct consequence of thoughts that you've thought. Thoughts that you've allowed into your mind. All of your feelings come from thoughts. Thoughts that you've chosen. Thoughts that you've allowed to control your heart and your mind. Your feelings simply follow your thoughts. So learning to make good choices in relation to how we think and the thoughts that we entertain is very important. If we're going to live a blessed life, if we're going to live a full life, if we're going to experience this abundant life that Jesus died to give us, thinking right thoughts, making right choices is vitally important in relation to the thoughts that we think and allow into our mind. Once we take control of our thoughts, our feelings change. Once we take control of our thoughts, our feelings follow the thoughts that we think. It's very simple. But oh, how often we forget it. Oh, how often we run into life's routine and just go through the monotony of living. And we're left with all of these feelings that can be so heavy and lead us to a place where we feel isolated and lonely. We need to realize today, maybe, that great progress for our lives is often just one thought away. Great progress for your life relationally, great progress for your life mentally, great progress for your life spiritually is but one new thought away. Open your heart, be ready to receive what God wants to say, the thought that he wants to impregnate your mind with. Today, you could be emotionally struggling to manage the mass of thoughts that are bombarding your mind. And if that's the case, don't despair because you're only one thought away from victory. You're only one thought away from deliverance. You're only one thought away from a brand new life, a brand new experience that God wants to bring you into. It was just one new thought from God that set Gideon free from a shattered identity. One new thought into his heart that set him free from being the lowest of the low. One new thought from God into Gideon's heart set him free from seven years of oppression. It was one new thought from God in Gideon's heart that came into his life that made him the valiant man that God had created him to be. And that new thought came at the most inconvenient of times in the most obscure place. Gideon was hiding in a hole in the ground, trying to thresh wheat. The Midianites had been oppressing God's people, Israel, for seven years. All of God's people were hiding away in the hills, living in caves. It was a terrible mess. 
they were in. They needed deliverance. But one new thought from God brought an end to seven years of oppression, to a problem that was getting worse, to a problem that was going out of control. It was one new thought in the heart of a young man that saved this nation. Listen to the new thought that broke into Gideon's heart from God's heart in Judges chapter 6, verse 12 and verse 14. It says this, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, Gideon, and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. At the heart of Israel's deliverance was one thought. One thought from God broke into the heart of a young man who was at his weakest, who was at his lowest, who thought that there was no way forward or no way out. It was just one thought that he believed and received and changed the history of God's people forever, setting them free. Suddenly he believed God's word and everything changed for that nation. You could be just like Gideon today, weak, bound in fear, cowering away, hiding out. And the pressures of life are overcoming you because they are bigger than your ability to contend with. Listen, it only takes one new thought. It only takes one new thought from the heart of God into your heart to enable you to do what you thought you could not do. God can bring prolonged problems suddenly to an end when we take hold of one new thought from his heart. Maybe time to listen to that thought that God has been trying to seed into your mind, to seed into your heart. When you catch it, it'll dramatically change your life forever. On one occasion, Peter heard a new thought. It came into his heavy heart after working all night and producing nothing. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, let down your nets for a catch of fish. But Lord, Peter said, we've worked all night. We've tried everything and caught nothing. A new thought came and confronted Peter in his disappointment, confronted Peter in his disillusionment, confronted him over a night that had been spent working hard. And at that new thought, Peter initially and momentarily protested and objected. And that's often our trouble. Sometimes, God comes with a word to our heart in a still, small voice, and it's a new thought to move us beyond a bad experience, to move us maybe from a series of bad experiences, and to open us up to something new, to open us up to something more abundant and something more fruitful. But to this new thought we contend with, to this new thought we argue and object just like Peter. Peter objected to this new directive that Jesus was given him because his thinking was back in a negative past experience that had been unfruitful. But oh, the joy, oh, the joy when Peter suddenly realized the potential of a new thought and who was behind it. Peter said, 
after he momentarily objected, he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, at your word, Jesus, I will let down the net. Do you remember what that new thought produced, that new revelation brought about? Peter got something that he never thought was possible. Just by simply embracing the new thought, the new directive that Jesus came with for his life, he got something more than he bargained for. He dropped the net, he started to lift that net, and the net was so full that it started to break, so full of fish. He started to pull it into the boat with Jesus, and I'm sure Jesus is there just smiling and looking at Peter. Peter's amazed, wide-eyed, unable to contain his excitement, unable to deal with the miraculous power of Christ's word to him. And the boat starts singing and then uh, singing. The boat starts sinking. It may have been singing too. The boat starts sinking. And Peter starts to signal to his, his friends to bring their boats and there's just mass abundance. At the heart of it was one new thought that Peter heard for his life. Not a thought from his own mind, but a thought from the heart of God to help him get beyond a past experience that was negative, that was unproductive. And as he embraced it, he saw a dimension of God's kingdom that he had never known or never seen. Great progress for your life. Maybe just one thought away. You're not going to continue walking around in circles. You're not going to continue going through the swamp and the quagmire of life, struggling. No, one new thought embraced in your heart is going to set you free and you're going to experience this wonderful abundance that God has for you. This is the Word of God. It really is. When Paul spoke to believers at Corinth, he gave them great wisdom and advice to think correctly. They were arguing, as usual, fighting among each other, having problems in their relationships. And the whole dilemma and the whole argument was about who was the greatest preacher. Some said Paul was the best. Others said Apollos was better than Paul. And Paul could see that it was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. So, to bring them back to a place of peace, to bring them back to a place of rest in their emotions, Paul simply diffused this ticking time bomb that was about to explode by directing them to think differently. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6, Paul wisely advises them with these words, not to think beyond what is written. Paul is giving them great guidance to keep their minds and their thinking inside the parameters of God's Word. Don't think outside of what's written, Paul says. Keep your mind within the boundaries of the promises of God. Don't allow your minds and your thoughts to stray outside of God's Word. It'll only lead to strife. It'll only lead to hostility. It'll only lead you into a place of disadvantage. No, don't think beyond what is written. Keep your mind within the written word of God. Let it dwell within you richly. Let it admonish you. Let it encourage you. Let it correct you. That's what he said to the church at Colossae. Let it dwell within you richly and keep your mind within the confines of what has been written. You remember when 
The devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. What did Jesus do? Well, he countered the devil's temptation. He countered the deception of the devil with this reply. It is written. Three times the devil tested him and tempted him. And three times Jesus came back and responded with the same answer. It is written written. And even when the devil tried to misquote and twist the scriptures, Jesus corrected him, not with his own opinion. He corrected him with the written word of God. It is written. That's a perfect example of how to deal with the devil by not thinking beyond what is written, but dealing with him with the word of God. Just like Jesus said, Last week, we read from Isaiah 43, where God said to his people, do not remember. Isaiah 43, verse 13, verse 18, sorry. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now, that's what's written. Why do we think beyond it? I'm asking myself that question. That is what is written, Dave. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. That's what I've written down for you to read, Dave. Why then do you think beyond it, Dave? Do not give heed to it. Give heed to the commandment of God. Give heed to the written word of God. Do not, I said it last week, do not means do not. It means do not in Spanish. It means do not in Combran. It means do not in Hebrew, in Greek, in Latin. What I mean, do not will always mean do not. And when God says do not remember, God means do not remember. It's written. Don't go outside of the parameters of it. Don't go beyond it. Live in the blessing, knowing that you never have to remember. You never have to go back into your past. You're free in your present and having great holding, great hope for your future. We go forward in the blessing of God's word. Fence. Fence your thoughts in, within the confines and the boundaries of God's Word. And don't let them go back beyond the borders of what has been written. Keep them in the Word of God. Now, I'm repeating that because it's important. It's important. Because all of us at some point can get into bad habits in the way that we think. We can be so preoccupied with the past that every waking moment we think about it. To the point that our present life is consumed with old memories. God does not want that for any one of us. He really doesn't regurgitating the past, feeding on stale, rotten food that's long past its use by date. That's what we do many times in our minds. We don't do that with our bodies. We feed it fresh food every single day. Our minds need new food. They need some new thoughts. They need God's thoughts. They need God's word. They need God's promises. That's what we need to meditate on. That's what we need to think on so that our souls can be enriched. We don't have to try and think about a million different ways how we could have or how we should have done things better. It's gone. It's over. 
Do not remember. That's a word straight from God's heart so that you can live in the fullness and in the blessing that he's created you to live in because he's doing a new thing. He really is. That's what's been written. Do not remember. So don't go beyond it. Don't go beyond it. Because that is what God has declared. So he doesn't want us to go back into the past. And on Jesus' words, he doesn't want us to go so far down into the future that we're consumed by fear, worry, and anxiety. Let's put this one to bed this morning. Let's bury this one right here. Sometimes we worry. Sometimes we get anxious. I'm talking from experience. And I'm fully qualified, unfortunately, to talk about this one. Worry too much of my life. I've been anxious too much. Too much. Far too much. Entertaining questions that I can't answer or anybody else can answer. Worries about health, worries about children, worries about our family, worries about our relationships, worries about if we've got a job next week, next year. An endless list of worries. And when we haven't got anything to worry about, we start worrying because we haven't got anything to worry about. It's a never-ending cycle. It really is. But what's written? What's written in the Word of God for you? Matthew 6. We looked at this a few weeks ago. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I say to you. Now, this isn't anybody speaking here. This is Jesus. The only one that can substantiate such a statement like this. The only one that has authority to declare a promise like this. This isn't from any, any, any person or any, any man other than Christ himself. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? This is what's written. Don't think beyond it. Don't go outside of its boundary. Jesus has declared you don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. That's wonderfully liberating. To know that our Heavenly Father knows every single detail and aspect about our life regarding our past, present, and future. He's got it covered. Just trust Him. Don't worry. Don't entertain it. Deal with that thought right at its root. Make a decision not to think beyond the boundary of what Jesus has set when he said, do not worry. You know, if you follow that, three simple words. If I follow that, do not worry. I mean, just those three words alone. Oh, the joy. Oh, the ease of living. The rest mentally. The rest in your heart. The lightheartedness. That's your portion, child of God. That's your inheritance, child of God. Don't forsake it by going beyond it and living outside of it. Keep your mind in it. Keep your heart in it. Don't worry. You haven't got a care in the world. You shouldn't have to carry anxiety or fear. And we do. Of course we do. But we shouldn't have to and we don't have to if we take hold of our Thoughts and the way that we think. Do you know, as a kid, I was very adventurous. 
And I remember when I was, you know, eight or nine, you can ask my mum, I'd go out with my friends, I'd be out all day, all day, just playing with my mates, just having a great time. And on occasions, we would, we would pass this field, this farmer's field, and it had pigs in it. And all around the perimeter fence of the field, there were bold signs saying, do not touch electric fence. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Do not touch electric fence. Well, we passed it by many times. But this one day, it caught my eye. And I turned to the boys. There was about 10 of us. I said, boys, look at that sign. That's not an electric fence. It's a hoax. I said, the farmer, I, I said, look, he's put all those signs around the fence. The farmer's just winding us up. I said, this, this is not an electric fence. I said, he just doesn't want us to go into his field. One boy wisely said, Dave, he said, don't go near that fence. He said, that's an electric fence. I laughed out loud. Rubbish. That's not an electric fence. And I can remember the boys just stood still looking at the fence because I was challenging a boundary. I was challenging a warning, rebelling against it. No, that's not an electric fence, boys. Load of rubbish. So another one of my friends, a good friend, he said, well, why don't you reach out and touch the fence, Dave, to see if it is electric? <laughs> All right, I said. Bold, arrogant, and proud. Very foolish, very foolish. I said, yeah. I said, I'll, I'll prove it to you now. It's not an electric fence. Over I went, reached out my hand, and I grabbed that fence. My God, I started to shake, rattle, and roll violently, right? I fell to the ground, and I couldn't let go of the fence because my reflexes were, were gripping on as the current. The voltage was going through my body. I couldn't let go of it until the circuit breaker kicked me back off the fence and I was laying flat back on the floor. All of my friends were as well, laughing their heads off. They couldn't believe. They couldn't believe the foolishness, the ignorance of Eddie. That's what they used to call me, Eddie. And I was shaken. They were laughing all the way home. I certainly wasn't. And I think that's when I started to lose my hair. <laughs> right there. There's a cause for everything, I tell you. Right? Right there. I was frying on that thing. That day, I learned... That if a sign says, do not touch electric fence, it actually means, do not touch electric fence. That's what it means, because that's what it says. Now, when Paul says, do not think beyond what is written, he actually means, do not think beyond what is written. When God, through his prophet Isaiah, spoke to Israel, and he said, do not remember former things. He actually means, do not remember former things. Because to go beyond the boundary could be quite shocking. And God doesn't want you to go back into your past. When Jesus says, do not worry, he actually means, do not worry. Because... He wants us to experience his blessing and his fulfillment in our lives. Next week, we're going to get to Philippians 4, where Paul said, and you'll remember these amazing words that Paul spoke to the Philippians church, Philippian church. He said this, do not be anxious for anything but through prayer and supplication 
with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Do not means do not. Do not be anxious for anything. I wonder today if you're worried. And it wouldn't be unusual in a gathering like this. I know that because many times I've stood on this stage preaching to you, feeling very worried. Or feeling fearful. Or feeling insecure. Or feeling low emotionally. But I have to reassess the way that I think so that I can address my life accordingly and bring it under the guidance of God's Word. When God says, do not remember, when God says, do not worry, when God says, do not be anxious, I now have to respond to that obediently and choose not to think beyond the boundaries of God's Word for my life. Address your thinking. Think about what you're thinking about. And if it's not good, then bring it into order. Address it and correct it with God's word. It's not easy. It's not easy. And we'll get to this in weeks to come. Paul shows us that our mind is a battlefield where a war is raging where a battle is being fought. Jesus has won the battle. Jesus has secured the victory. He really has. And now a war rages where the enemy tries to bring us down in our minds and use our own hands to bring about a stronghold of his design. We've got to turn against that. We've got to address that. Because God wants us to have a sound mind, the very mind of Christ, amen, the mind of Christ. In that mind, there is no worry. In that mind, there is no fear. In that mind, there is no anxiety. In that mind, there is peace. There is perfect peace. There is power. There is dominion. There is strength whereby we can reign in life. There really is. Think about, think about what you're thinking about. Behind all of our feelings are a series of thoughts that bring them about. Our life moves in the direction of our strongest thought. That's what determines our direction in life. So we may have to address some of the thoughts that we are thinking and bring them back into line in relation to God's word and what he has said. Today, within our thinking, we may have stepped outside of the boundaries of God's word. We've got to bring it back in, rein them back in. And just one new thought will bring about great release, great deliverance, and great peace. Amen? I'm going to ask the musicians to come. We're going to finish there today. Years ago, I remember going through a challenging time in my mind. Everything around me was great. But there was a war and a battle in my mind. And I couldn't get peace. I couldn't get beyond this mental struggle, tussle, wrestle in my mind for a number of days. Day and night, wrestling struggling with thoughts 
trying to bring me down emotionally, leaving my heart heavy. I cried out to God. Remember, I was in the park pushing Daniel. Daniel used to get up early every morning, six o'clock. Daddy, are you ready to go down the park now? <laughs> Come on then, son, let's go. I get him in the push chair, push him down the park. Be there by quarter past six. <laughs> I want to go in that big swing, but uh, push me high. Come on then, son, in the swing, pushing him. Oh, this is fun, Daddy. Pushing him back and forth. Hiya, Daddy. And I'm doing all of this. You see, you can be, you can be, you can be doing all the fun things in life, but your heart can be really heavy. You can be doing all the great things with the family, but your mind is in pieces. Pieces. I've been there lots of times. Yeah, yippee, Daddy. Heart heavy. Mind confused. I'm pushing in, trying to smile. That's it, son. We can do it together. And I'm having a conversation with God. Please help me. Please. I need a word. I need a new thought from you to change my life. Great progress in our lives can be just one thought away. And I said, I said this to him. Give me peace. And at right, he was waiting for that. That's what he was waiting for. Give me peace. And he said, no, I'm not going to give you peace. I'm pushing the swing. Oh, God, if I don't get peace from you, I am in big trouble. I can't go on like this. Give me peace. No. I am not going to give you peace, he said. And I cried again. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, I'm not going to give you peace. I'm going to give you perfect peace. Perfect peace. He was waiting for that cry in order to respond with his word. He'll give you, he'll always give you more than you bargained for. He'll always give you more than you can ever ask or imagine. And my mind immediately went to that verse in, I believe it's Isaiah uh, 23, where it says, He whose mind is stayed on Jehovah is kept in perfect peace. And suddenly I understood it. Dave, you've got to stay your mind on me. Dave, you've got to keep your mind within the framework and the boundaries and the borders of my written word. Dave, you've got to take control of your mind. Dave, you've got to be strong with those thoughts. Dave, any thought that tries to stray outside of my word and my promise and my blessings for your life, you've got to be ruthless with them and take them down and take them out. It's like cutting and pasting. Cut that thought out and paste a promise in. You do it all the time on the computer. It's the only computer skill that I, that I know. Cut and paste. I love it. Bit of cut and pasting. We've got to do that in our minds. You've got to cut out all that negative stuff. You've got to cut out all of that stuff that causes you to be anxious. You've got to cut it out. You've got to be ruthless with those things. Don't allow them in and paste in the promises of God. You're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. Paste that in on a Monday morning. My God. If you do that, your life will thrive. My life will thrive. We've got to do a bit of cutting and pasting after today's service. And any thought that tries to hinder and bring you down, be ruthless with it. On the authority of God's written word, I will not worry. I will not remember. I will not think beyond what is written. No. God's for me. He's not against me. I'm going forward. I'm going for him. Amen. Amen. Why don't we give him a, a shout of praise? Why don't we applaud him? This is how he wants us to live. This is how he wants us to walk. It really is. 
It really is. Father, I pray today for your people. And Lord, you know sometimes the burdens that we carry. You know how fierce this battle can be and how it can get the better of us in our mind. But Lord, you encourage us with your word today. Lord Jesus, thank you. The great progress for our lives may be just one thought away. And I pray for anybody here that is struggling emotionally. I pray for anybody here that is struggling mentally in their mind. They can't think straight beyond the fear. Think straight beyond the worry and the concern that they have. I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you will deliver every single one of us from any kind of spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, we tell you to go, we tell you to leave, and we thank you, Lord, for a sound mind. Love, power, and a sound mind is our portion in Christ Jesus. I thank you for your people, Father, and let us know the wonderful blessing of perfect peace in the days in which we live. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Come on, let's stand. Yeah, why don't we give Jesus another shout and a praise as we sing before we go. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you have any prayer requests, would like to share a testimony, or would like to give online, why not head over to our website, kings-church.org.uk. If you prayed the prayer of salvation today and would like us to contact you to help you with your next steps, please click on the Choose Jesus button of our website. Remember, you can stay connected at this time by staying in touch with your Connect and team leaders. If you are part of King's Church and are not yet connected, Scroll down to our Connect Online section and we will be sure to get in touch. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to meeting with you again very soon.